Good morning, everyone. Our service this morning begins as we sing hymn number 13, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to welcome you all. A happy Mother's Day. 
to all those of you who are celebrating Mother's Day today, uh, for those of you whose mothers are far away in one sense or another, uh, our prayers are with you. And for all those of you for whom it's a difficult day, we hold you in peace because today is a great day to remember what God has done among us as he has gathered us as uh, a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. As Jesus Christ moves among us today, it's also a great day to remember what he is doing in and through us, which is why we're celebrating Vocation Sunday. So we're going to be thinking all, all about that all the way through the service. We've got a nice little surprise for us as well, as um, I'm not doing all of the talking. Uh, do keep uh, those who are unable to be with us here today. You might notice I'm, there's not very many of us at the top here uh, for all sorts of reasons. I know that some people have got aching limbs from yesterday. Congratulations to all those of you who worked so hard yesterday. It was amazing. Not just because we did a great thing and, and raised a lot of money, but because we brought the community together. We did what we were supposed to do. So congratulations. But on this Vocation Sunday especially, we give thanks to God that he calls us all. All of us are called to varieties and forms of service uh, in his church and in the world. And we'll be thinking about that. So we pray with uh, that sense of the Holy Spirit moving through us. So how is the Holy Spirit moving? Try and uh, think, discern, pray that you'll notice the Holy Spirit moving here today and that we may all know and discern God's call for us in our lives. In order to get there, let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite you at this point to kneel together if you can. If you're not in a kneeling sort of phase of life, that's okay. But if you are in a, a kneeling phase, let's see if we can kneel as much as we can. It's a good physical attitude to take before God, particularly as we consider vocations, because whenever we consider vocations, we tend to remember um, was it all that we have failed to do. But St. Paul writes, or says, I, I set no store by life. I only want to finish the race, complete the task, that the Lord has assigned to me of bearing witness to the gospel of grace. Let's confess our sins and our failure to live up to our calling. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we know that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you appointed us to go and bear fruit that will last. Lord, have mercy. My sisters and brothers, may God, who loved the world so much, that he sent his Son to be our Savior, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing together in praise of God the words of the glory and excelsis. If you're in a standing up phase of life, you might want to stand up. We're being properly Anglican today, up and down, up and down. Keeps us fit. It stretches the muscles that we didn't use yesterday.
today's an unusual day in the life of the church because um, we share it not just with Anglicans around the world, but with actually many denominations. Uh, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters call today Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, you'll, you'll see why if you haven't worked it out already. And folk across the world are thinking about what it means to be called by God when the Holy Spirit moves among us. What does that actually mean? So let's pray for one another, not just in this church or in Bermuda or around the world, all the Anglicans, but everybody, all of the Christians all around the world, because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let's pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the scriptures together. Good morning, church. Good morning, Susan. The first reading is chapters, it's Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek for Dorcas. She was, a devo she was devoted and good works and the acts of charity. At that time she became ill and she died. When they washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was close to Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with a request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics of their other clothing that Dorca had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and he prayed. He turned to the body and he said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. She gave his hand and helped him up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Revelations chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be yours, God, forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of a lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor the scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from every eye. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm set for today is Psalm 23, so we're going to sing it together using the old hymn. Um, the King of love my shepherd is. 
number 484. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be servant of all. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. I am the good shepherd, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father God, help us to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd today and to know him and to follow him wherever he leads in Jesus Christ by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And I want to welcome up Emily. So, Shall, shall I explain why you're coming up, or do you want to do it yourself? Um, I don't mind. I'm happy to do it. I'm... You do it then. Go on. That, we'll call it empowerment. You go for it, Emily. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So, yeah, thank you very much, Emp, for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm really excited about it. 
So I think most of you know me. I've been here eight years, but I know there's definitely ones of you where I haven't really shared more than the piece with you before. So just to give you a very short introduction, my name's Emily Flood. I moved to Bermuda in 2014 and then started at St. Paul's August or September of the same year. Um, I married to a Bermudian who's in the congregation today, so that's what brought me to the island and been here ever since and very settled. I think you all know my two daughters from, yeah, traipsing up every week for communion, making a bit of noise sometimes. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, so Anne asked if I could speak today to give you a little um, background on Spring Harvest, which I went to recently. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you a bit about what Spring Harvest is, some of the themes and messages I got from there why I went, and a bit about just how I make space for God and some tips I wanted to share, really. So, um, as I said, I went to a Christian conference called Spring Harvest about two weeks ago now. So this is an annual um, five-day Christian conference which happens in the UK. It's been going since the 80s. I, my mum first took me to it when I was a baby. Um, so they have up to 20,000 attendees. They have it at two different locations. Basically, there's this holiday resort in the UK. Those of you who know the UK will have heard of Butlins. So it's held in Butlins. They book out the whole venue um, at these two locations around Easter every year, um, and it's taken over by this conference. So all denominations across the UK come here and gather together. Um, those of you who have been to something like this, I'm sure you'll agree, like when you have that many Christians together, the atmosphere is just amazing. So um, I was telling a lot of people, um, a lot of my friends and colleagues, that I was going to this before I was going. I've got a lot of friends and colleagues who aren't Christians. They were like, five days? Is it just nonstop church? Like, what, is it a really long service? Like, what do you do there? They were quite like, yeah, it was mind-boggling for them like to kind of get their head around like is it not just a half an hour service you pray and then you get on with your day like what do you mean so um i spent a lot of time talking them through like a typical day you know what the talks are about you know how you can really spend that much time like learning and singing together and stuff so i'll you know do the same here so every day there was a large morning gathering well there was two of them because you know there was too many people to be in one kind of venue so that in the venue there's lots of like big halls like conference centers and um, there so there'll be two large morning gatherings where everyone will come together have about half an hour of worship and then a talk um, then during the day there will be a kids program from every age group from zero up to 18 and um, they'll be in their little groups doing different things um, and then for the adult population attending there were lots of very specific talks um, yeah, more detailed specialist talks you could go to in the daytime. And then again, you come together in the evening for a large gathering. There'll be two options. Again, it'll be about two hours, the evening one, a lot of worship, and then quite a detailed talk. Um, in terms of the specific talks in the daytime, some of the examples, the ones I went to, building your child's emotional well-being, how to evangelize in the workplace without getting fired, technology and leadership. So just all like really specialist um, topics. So it's really interesting. And basically, you can go to as much as or as little as you want. You know, there's no obligation. You pay to attend for the week and, you know, you dip in and out. So it's not like it's a really intense eight hours every day. You can do, yeah, whatever you want there. And then on top of that, they have like a, it's called the big top. It's like this big kind of, well, you want to call it a tent. It's a bit like the O2 Arena, anyone who's been to the O2 Arena. So this big venue where you have every type of Christian charity, retailers, um, come together and have their stand. So, you know, you find out about all these things you otherwise wouldn't have, all these different um, things you can get involved in. Some of the charities are just so interesting, and, yeah, you'd never otherwise hear of them. So there's that going on a week as well. So every year at Spring Harvest, they'll have a theme. So this year's theme was Renew, Restore, Rebuild, and we were studying Nehemiah, and it was the same with the kids. They, you know, at their level, but we're all studying this same theme and this same um, book in the Bible. And it was amazing. There was so much I could talk about, but um, I brought, yeah, I've summarized three key takeaways for me, which I really got from it. So the first one was the idea of God working in the ruins. So they spent a lot of time, the speakers there spent a lot of time acknowledging the last two years and what's going on up to today, basically. 
the lack of hope and despair, a lot of people feeling, and including the church. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't just brushed over. It wasn't just a fun get-together. You know, it really was kind of dealt with and acknowledged. And, um, yeah, they spoke about how this is God's territory. This is where God works. Again, the theme was renew, restore, rebuild. So it's in these broken times that God's really got this opportunity to rebuild, and we have as well. And, yeah, I mean, it ran right into um, the book of Nehemiah. So it was really, really encouraging for me because, yeah, I think we've all been feeling a bit run down and burnt out and like you know every time there's a new news article you're like what more can happen so it was just really encouraging to remember that this is God's territory this is where he works it's not when things are going you know bright and wonderful it's like Paul says when we're truly weak then God has the opportunity then he's truly strong and can work in us and in the situations so I loved that um, the second big one for me was about change. So again, we're talking about um, the talkers and what we're learning about was like really rebuilding and rebuilding in the church. And the idea, one of the speakers spoke a lot about how change doesn't come from one big movement or one big church. I think it's so, um, so often we can think, what can I do? You know, it's just a drop in the ocean. And the same sometimes with church populations. You think, well, we're just a tiny church in the middle of nowhere. But they spoke about it's those churches, it's those tiny committed churches in the middle of nowhere and those tiny committed people who feel like they can't do anything. It's a collective effort. It's all of us doing our part together and reaching our immediate area. You know, it's us working in the community and doing our part. And he put it a lot more eloquently than that, but it just really, yeah, encouraged me and reminded me, especially in Bermuda, I think it, it is easy to feel a bit sometimes detached like well what can we do and it's just our reminder to all play our part and you know be part of that rebuilding so the third message um which yeah plays right into what Ant was talking about um was that we were all called to ministry and I just found that really uh yeah just really empowering um so um, one of the speakers spent a lot of time talking about, well, apologizing. He basically said, every one of you in this room has probably been told at some point, no, you can't do that, sorry. You know, we've had a think about it. It's not right for you. Um, and he said, I'm sorry for that. You should never have been told that in that way. There's no one who's too young, too old, inexperienced, not smart enough, doesn't speak the right way to, you know, that there's no such thing. We're all called to ministry. And, I mean, that alone obviously isn't an alien concept. You know, we talk a lot about being the body of Christ and all having a part to play. But, yeah, the way they spoke about it was just amazing. So there's this reverend called Chris Rogers who, um, basically, he's the reverend of a um, church in a very poor borough of East London, Tower Hamlets. Um, and he's actually the chair of Spring Harvest now. Um, he's done amazing things. He's pretty well known, you know, like kind of, yeah, very reputable, respected speaker. At the beginning of his talk, you know, when he had a talk, everyone would turn up. He was like the guy there kind of thing. At the beginning of his talk, he went into this rundown of his background. Basically, I'm a very ordinary guy. My dad's an electrician. You know, I'm not from a line of speakers. I became a Christian because at my parents' wedding, the figure kind of, you know, made me think. So it, he, he had a very, very ordinary, you know, working class background. You know, he was like first generation Christian. And he called himself a fool caught up in God's plan. And I just loved it. Um, so, yeah, it just made me think that's what I want to be. Um, you know, there's no such thing as not being ready. And obviously there's times when you're being called to do something. And there's times where you're not. But I think so often we have, you know, the calling. We have the desire in our heart. And we even have the availability and opp the opportunities there. But we'll tell ourselves, no one else is telling us often either. We'll tell ourselves, oh, no, that's not for me. I can't do that. I'm not ready. Maybe in five years. Oh, no, no. I, you know, I get up there like today. Oh, no, I get up de there and trip over my words. I can't do that. So, yeah, let's all be fools caught up in God's plan. <laughs> um, in, on this same bit about being called to ministry, um, there was... A huge ministry team there. Anytime you needed prayer, you know, you were told where they were in any talk, so you could go at any time and kind of, you know, if you needed some, someone to talk to, some support or some prayer, there was like, you know, a qualified ministry team, let's say, there. But on top of that, often during the talks or at the end of the talks, they'd say, right, 
We want you now to, you know, pray together, whoever you're next to. And for a lot of us, that was uncomfortable. We weren't with, you know, Kemi in a group of like five where you're talking to your friends about it, you know, as a stranger, and you're like, oh, hi. Um, but, you know, the idea that we're all called to pray, and it, it was really, really empowering. Um, another speaker spoke about, he said, you know, the gift of prayer, sometimes that's just used in such an unhelpful way because it implies not everyone has the gift of prayer where we're all called to pray. We all have a right and a role to play, you know, not just to pray on our own individually, but, you know, pray for one another and offer that support to each other. So, again, having that time in the services to do it with each other was, you know, really empowering, especially for those who, you know, hadn't done that. And sometimes it's a bit more comfortable to do it with strangers. You don't feel like such an idiot as you would with your friend. Um, so, yeah, all being called to ministry, that was my final kind of takeaway. So why did I go, and why would I suggest you go? So for me, it was, I was viewing it as an investment of, in my faith. I'm sure everyone in the room can relate. Like, life is just so busy. There's just so many distractions. For me, if I hadn't booked Spring Harvest and gone away for that week, I just wouldn't have spent that much time with God. Absolutely not. So it, it gave me that space and that time to spend with God I otherwise wouldn't have. I'll put time and energy into anything else I'm serious about, you know, my work, kids, you know, um, diet, working out. Well, let's not say working out, but I'm sure others can relate. <laughs> um, so why would I not do the same? How can I expect to grow in my walk with God if that's what I want, if I'm not putting in that same amount of time that I'm putting in if I want to lose two pounds or if I want a promotion at work? It, you know, it works the same way. So my pitch to you basically is the same way Spring Harvest gave me that time and space to dedicate to my growth, it would do for you. I've spoken about, you know, the talks and, you know, an average day and the stands you see of all the Christian, Christian charities and stuff. It basically just gives you access to these, you know, like subject matter experts basically in Christianity, you know, all the best speakers, apologists, theologians, and you have these really specific talks, you know, about things which might interest you, but no one you know around you to be able to kind of talk with in day-to-day -day, um, scenarios. So it's, yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, you can view it as an industry trade show. If you work in a specialist industry, you're going to be attending regular conferences with other industry experts. Um, I mean, what do you get from that? You grow your network, you learn new ideas and ways of doing things and, you know, upcoming technology and whatever that is, and you meet every specialist there is in your field and get to hear from the experts. So Spring Harvest is basically the Christian form of that. You know, you get to grow your network, you get to learn different ways of doing things, and you get to really spend that time with other people who've got that same passion and drive. So going back to the industry example, you know, Again, so if you're an accountant, for example, you know, in all, you're, you're a certified accountant by an accredited body. In order to keep that certification year on year, in, for them to keep, yeah, accrediting you, you need to demonstrate your continued professional development. You need to have a certain amount of training hours each year in order to, to keep your qualification. I mean, it's the same with spiritual growth. We, you know, if we want to keep moving forward, in our walk with God, we need to put in that same type of work. You know, we need to dedicate our time. And it's not about being legalistic. It's just about, you know, putting in the effort and, you know, in order to get something for it. So, yeah, my final point um, coming out of this is just making space for God. So conferences, I mean, they're amazing, but they can be a bit like a spiritual spa. It's amazing. You have this week around everyone. Again, like I said, all the distractions have gone away. You're feeling great. You don't have to worry about your boss asking when you're coming back from your lunch break, whatever else it is. But obviously, you know, it's not real life. It's like going on holiday. You come back or going to the spa. You come back a week later. It's all undone. You go get a massage. You're like, oh, all my aches and pains are gone. I feel amazing. Two days later, you know, you're lifting up things about bending your knees. You're slouching over your desk and all the pains are back. And you're like, oh, Monday feels like two years away. So, yes, that's true. But the same with the, you know, spa analogy. If I actually started thinking, you know, if I went and got a massage and then started thinking, right, if I want to keep this nice feeling in my back, what do I need to change? I need to sit up straight. I need to 
you, you know, bend my knees and maybe say no to a bit more and, you know, give myself a break. So it's the same about, um, you know, with these conferences, there is a risk, obviously. Um, and the same with church, you know. You go, you feel amazing in the service, you're like, great, back on track with God, I feel so focused. And then two hours later, you're screaming at the kids, burnt dinner, and, you know, everything's gone wrong, and, yeah, church feels a mile away. Um, so it's, and they talk about this in the conferences, because we, we, we all know this happens in, yeah, whether you're away for a week or just in church. It's about making sure any work you put in and any transformation that's taken place isn't temporary. So it's about how to keep that level of focus. So for me, as well as having that space to spend with God, it also allows that space, if you take it, to actually explore, you know, beyond just having a great time and, you know, replugging in with God, but exploring what I need to ch change to make it last, to make that time, um, yeah, to find that time and space for God once I come back out. And again, I'm sure a lot of you will relate. It's a journey I've made so many times where, you know, everything's going well and then before you know it, you're way off track and you're like, hold on, what went wrong? And you have to take that step back and review and work out what you need to do differently. So, I mean, it, it's a healthy thing to do as well. You know, we take our cars for MOTs every six months or every year. I'm a new driver. <laughs> I haven't done many. Um, you know, we go for our annual physicals. You know, we, we take time to check in with everything else. You know, there's no reason, you know, it's a bad thing, you know, having to stop and make that readjustment. It's like when you're driving and then your sat-nav zooms out and you're like, oh, hold on, I thought I was about to take a right and now the map's like a million scales bigger. What's going on? And it's like recalculating your route. It, so we all, we all need to do it. And when I'm at that place... I feel like I am quite regularly needing to reevaluate and work out how I can make more space. These are the three things I wanted to share with you I do, which I hope might help some of you. So number one is sacrifice. Removing things which are in, the, in my way, getting in the way of God. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It doesn't it's not like you're identifying things you're doing wrong. It's just identifying things which are, for whatever reason, becoming a distraction, something between you and God. And it's so personal. What it is for one person will be something completely different for someone else. So when I was 20, um, I went through a period of fasting. I had quite a severe one of these step backs, have a look, reassess. Um, and I fasted um, for a period of about 50 days. And I was like, if I'm going to do this, um, you know, I don't want any other distractions because I guess the whole idea of fasting is removing something to make more space for God or, you know, have that clarity to actually hear from God. So I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm, I want to, yeah, I love food. I was like, I want to get something from it if I'm saying goodbye to food for this long. So I also said goodbye to TV and music just because I thought maybe they'll get in the way. I didn't feel overly attached to them. But anyway, at the end of it, what I really identified for me, which was such a massive distraction, which I never, ever would have known, was music. It was, I absolutely loved my music, but there's nothing wrong with loving music, right? Why, why would that get in the way? And it was only because I took that step back, I really realized the impact it was having on me and my time with God and my behavior, in a way, and I think that's quite unusual. I don't think that's, you know, that's just an example to show how personal it can be and how it isn't necessarily something wrong. It's not like you're looking for, you know, something bad you're doing, but it's just whatever it is, which is the distraction or will just give you that extra space. So, yeah, it was such a massive thing for me. And then having to let go of listening to music, and again, like I said, this is a very hard line. I'm not saying you know, this would apply to anyone else, but it's just to paint that picture, give you that example. And then, yeah, spending that time having to actually, it was back when, you know, everything was on like LimeWire and CDs and, you know, I had my like list of a few thousand odd songs and I remember going through them, deleting them one by one when I finally come to terms with this and it was like such a big thing for me. It was like heartbreaking. Um, but I never would have known 
that that was something which had been getting in the way of me and God had I not, you know, taken that time to stand back and assess and, yeah, give myself that space to really look. So um, the second thing for me is just booking the time. Again, like I said, we're all busy. If you book a coffee with your friend at 11, unless an emergency comes along, you're going to be there at 11 to meet your friend. So for me, I have to do exactly that. Book it in my calendar as a set date or it doesn't happen. So yeah, for those who are busy or find you know, your day just being eaten up, I recommend giving that a try. Booking it as a meeting just like you would with anyone else and you know, committing to that time. And number three would be accountability. So a lot of you, I'm sure, will have someone in your life. But having a prayer partner, having someone who you can lean on and talk your struggles through with and pray with is amazing. So I first, around this same time that I went through this thing at age 20, right, um, I reached out to a very close friend of mine and we, we started having this relationship. So each week we'd meet, we'd talk about, you know, what we're struggling with, what we want prayer for, and just talk it through. And then, you know, next week she'd come back to me and say, how it's going? I'll be like, oh, not very well. Or, yeah, I've made progress. But just having that person to check in with and, you know, pray with and have that support was amazing. And some of you might be thinking, well, I don't have a good friend who, you know, I feel that comfortable with or who would be like, hold on, yeah, go to church, but I don't really want to spend 45 minutes praying with you every week. And it doesn't need to be that, you know, what, whatever works for you. But um, the second person, when I came out to Bermuda, I did the same thing. But I reached out to someone I didn't even know. I knew she was a Christian. She wrote um, Christian blogs every few weeks. And um, my husband had gone to school with her. That was all I knew about her. And I was like, you know, I'm drowning out here. I don't really know anyone. What have I got to lose? So I sent her a message and said, hey, how would you feel about meeting up? You know, I'm, I used to have someone I prayed with and I really, you know, benefit from that. And she didn't reply. And I'm like, oh, no, I've looked like a complete idiot. She's like, who's this crazy girl? Don't even know her. And then she did get back to me. And we met up. And it was amazing. And the benefits we had from not knowing each other was almost greater because we could speak so openly. When it's a friend, sometimes you're a bit uncomfortable about sharing things. You know, if they've known you for years, you know, you've got that familiarity, but sometimes it's over familiarity and you feel like there might be a bit of judgment. And often that's an insecurity on your part. But when it's someone you don't know, you can just be a whole lot more candid. So it was amazing. And it was an amazing journey. And we turned out to become really good friends through it. But my point is, if, if you don't have someone and you're thinking, well, I don't know anyone who I could even ask, I'd say don't let that put you off. It doesn't need to be someone you know at all. And there are benefits to both sides. So, yeah, they're the three ways I have made space for God, and I hope that's helpful. So that was all I had to share with you today. hope you found it interesting, and thank you very much for listening to me. Emily, thank you very much indeed. Um, I wholeheartedly endorse this message. Thank you. There are so many Christian festivals around the world, and they are great opportunities, as Emily has shown. Emily is a great witness to a living Christian faith. Uh, at no point in our Christian faith should we ever think, oh, I've arrived now, I'm doing it right. It's always more that we can get into God. So I, I think everything that Emily said, just pick up something, remember it, take it with you today, and uh, respond to it. Because that's how our faith turns from uh, a faith that's quite passive and, and sort of just, we just sort of believe something, uh, into something that makes a transformative difference in our life, in the lives of those around us. It changes the community, as Emily says. It, it's... It's small little changes can have massive impacts. Um, and I just know that James would have been listening very, uh, very intently to, uh, what was it you did? Technology and leadership, was that? Yeah. I was quite interested in that, James, were you? Yeah, okay, that trip's happening. 
Um, so and that's the other thing that e Emily said, you know, it's much more fun when, when we do it together. It's not just prayer partners. Sometimes you see a, a Christian festival and it comes up on YouTube or Facebook or something, you think, oh, I'd quite like to go to that. Um, don't want to go alone. Well, talk to the rest of us. There might be a little team of three or four. I remember a time when some folk went with Maureen down to Haiti, didn't they, James? Ten years ago. So uh, all sorts of things can happen when we decide to do things together. So just an encouragement this morning to do that. Today, right now, we're going to stand and we're going to say together the words of the Nicene Creed. So please stand up uh, if you're in that stage of life. The thing about the Nicene Creed is um, we say it, we're not always sure we understand what it means. Uh, that's okay. I want you to know that for a start. It's okay. But Christians have been saying it for 1,700 years, so we're not going to stop. But today we're going to say it in a different way. We're going to say it uh, in a much more sort of African way. So I'm going to say a bit and then you're going to repeat back to me. Or you're going to say a bit back to me, all right? So um, let's see how that works. You ready? We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father. Be begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. We believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son who has spoken through the prophets We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Christian faith is about learning that interaction between us and God and us and each other. So that's why we say it like that on this day. That's what vocation is. But for now, we're going to uh, turn to God uh, in prayer and we're going to bring him the concerns of our world and of our hearts. If someone could go and get the Sunday school, that'd be great. Thanks. Would you please sit or kneel? Thank you. Let us come quietly together to make our petitions to our gracious and loving Lord. When I say, Lord, hear your people, would you please reply and answer our prayers? Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Lord God, we pray for our Queen, our Governor, our Premier, and the Leader of the Opposition, and for all of the leaders of the world who work for peace and unity. We continue to pray for the peacemakers, talented men and women who work throughout the world, finding ways for enemies to talk to each other, to seek common good, to compromise, and eventually to reconcile their differences. Grant them patience and understanding and the knowledge that their work may bring peace. Today, we hold up the peacemakers in the Ukraine and in other conflicts happening elsewhere in the world, in Africa, Israel, and Palestine. Lord, hear your people. And answer our prayers. Mighty Lord, this morning we pray for all our church leaders. Archbishop Justin, Bishop Nick, Archdeacon Andrew, Canon Ant, and all the clergy and lay ministers. Please uphold their ministries and their vision for the church in Bermuda. 
We are so thankful, Lord, on this vocation to Sunday for those who have answered your call to give of themselves in the service of others. The wardens, the vestry, the church girls' brigade, the boys' brigade, the Sunday school, the youth group, the guild, the flower fairies, the choir, Alana, James. Keep them all safe and well as they minister to us. And we give you thanks and praise this morning for the wonderful Not the Valentine Fair, which was held yesterday for all the hard work and determination of all those involved. Lord, hear your people. Creator God, we thank you for the precious gift of your creation, for all the life we can see around us, the flowers, the trees, the birds, the insects, the animals, and the mighty ocean. Help us to be good stewards of your planet and to do our best to save the resources we have to safeguard them for our future generations. Lord, hear your people. And answer our prayers. Father God, please bless all mothers, stepmothers, foster mothers, single mothers, godmothers, and all who have been like mothers to us as we celebrate this special day in their honor. Let their example of faith and unconditional love shine forth and grant that we, their daughters and their sons, will honor and appreciate them with a spirit of profound love and respect. Lord, hear your people. And answer our prayers. Dearest Lord, bless our homes and families with the joy of your presence. May our homes be ever open to you and your love. We pray for all who struggle with chronic illness and pain, for those who are lonely and for those who suffer addictions and depression. We pray for all carers and those who visit and comfort the sick, for those who listen and for those who pray. We remember those listed on our bulletin and any others that we might know personally. Bring comfort to all in need, especially today we think of the refugees in the Ukraine crisis and anyone else who is fleeing from the devastation of war. We pray for those families who have been separated from each other running from their homes or from the death of a loved one during these dreadful times. This morning we lift up to you those families who have suffered the devastating loss of everything they had due to the gas explosion in Southampton. Lord, hear your people. And answer our prayers. Merciful Lord, we remember those before you who have died, and we pray for all whose lives have been saddened by the death of a loved one. Once again, the island is greatly distressed by another senseless killing of one of our young men. Help us, dear Lord, to find a way to resolve this unnecessary violence. We remember this morning Walter Cook, Dolores Franks, Oscar Maracanianus, and Quiche Robinson. Please comfort the grieving families and gently walk with them in their distress. Lord, hear your people. And answer our prayers. Everlasting God, finally we pray for ourselves. We pray for our own weaknesses and failings, the times when we have failed you for the times we have justified a reason for looking the other way, for the times when we have kept our hands tightly on our money, avoiding the needy hand, for the unkind words we have thought and the deaf ear we have turned. Lord, forgive us and make us whole again. As we have been revived by the joy of your resurrection, let us go from this place today and show that we are a loving family of God, serving our community. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Joe lovely to pray together. Would you please stand? We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith. 
heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. We're going to sing our uh, offertory hymn now, which is number 117, a uh, lovely gentle song, uh, Faithful Shepherd, Feed Me, as we come to Holy Communion together. I think Sunday school are having far too much fun. Um, either that or they're playing with all the items that are still down there from the fair, which is entirely possible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we set before you these gifts of bread and wine, bless also the gift of our hearts and minds as we offer our lives in your service. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, source of all that is. For you have called our world into existence and filled it with abundant life. You called a chosen people as your own and led them in the way of holiness. You called your beloved Son in whom you were well pleased to give his life for us on the cross and rise again in glory. And now we give you thanks that you call men and women to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and he gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let's kneel together and pray as the saints have prayed since Jesus taught us this prayer, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Hallelujah.
Diana, the body and blood of Christ, keep him in eternal life. The body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Tarek, the body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Elaine, the body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Galen, the body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Sheila, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Annette, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life, Margaret. Body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life, Charles. Susan, the body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. And may the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. So I the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Shelly in the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life, Kay. Yes, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Just that thought. and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let's pray together the prayer after communion. Lord of the harvest, you have fed us, your people, in this sacrament with the fruits of creation made holy by your Spirit. By your grace, raise up among us faithful laborers to sow your word and reap the harvest of souls through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's see if our young people have got anything you want to share with us today? Yep. Great. Now, Emily went first last week, so who's going to go first this week? Sianna, are you going to go? Excellent. Excellent. Well done, Sianna. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, that's a wicked laugh, but I'm guessing it's in good fun. So, Siana, take it away. So, in our group, we were studying literary styles of the Bible. So, we got a few Bible verses and we searched them up in our Bible. And then we had to say what literary style it was. Awesome. Oh, you've been getting really technical, you guys. You'd be, be, be preaching the scriptures next. Awesome. Go for it, Nathan. Okay. So, as Sienna said, we had to sort our Bible verses into categories. Yeah. The categories were prose discourse, narrative, and poetry. So, and there were three different um, sections inside of each. So for narrative, it was um, narrative parable. What was it? How deep were you going, Miss Ruth? Biography. It was narrative parable, biography, and historical. Yes, well, thank Harry. you. Harry. And then in it is going very close to a lecture. That's very good. And in poetry, we had songs. Songs, wisdom, and prophecy. And in prose discourse, we had laws, wisdom, and letters. Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. All right, definitely worth a round of applause. Okay. Now that Go for it, Emily. We were... So we took some toilet paper rolls and we were balancing a ball on it. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Do you say anything? Okay, Harry, you want to add to that? Okay. They've been absolutely brilliant. We've had everything today. That's proper Sunday school. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Good morning, church. Yes, we did use Lou Blue roll cause. Um, actually, this morning we were trying to learn about perseverance and um, never giving up. And uh, we did some exercises that required the children to be um, working in teams and um, complete a task, which involved um, balancing a ping pong ball on a very long um, loo roll or kitchen roll core. So that's what we were doing. <laughs> Just to clarify. Just to clarify, yeah. <laughs> We weren't just playing with uh, toilet rolls and, and ping pong balls. Awesome. We love our Sunday school leaders and the, those of you who come to be with them. Right. So, um, it's Vocation Sunday, and you're thinking about your vocation, and Emily's given you loads of ways of engaging with that, so let's just think where we're at at the moment. So... Who thinks that it's fantastic that we have ordained ministry in the church? Stick your hand up. Think it's great that we have ordained ministry? I mean, it shouldn't be everyone. That's okay. That's okay. Well, you've got an opportunity to celebrate it this week because on Tuesday night, we can all go to the cathedral at 7 o'clock where Canon Jerry, uh, Canon Jerry Smith uh, and his wife Margie, Canon Jerry Smith is going to be installed as uh, Canon Residentiary of the cathedral. So finally, we're going to have a cathedral canon. Yeah, absolutely. We miss, we miss Norman dearly, but it's good to have a cathedral canon. Uh, and the good news about that is it means that Bishop Nick will be free next Sunday, so he's going to come here. I know. I stole him straight away. So that's absolutely fantastic. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, who think that it's great? Who thinks that it's great that we have an opportunity to do Bible study, not just in Sunday school, but uh, at other times as well? Who thinks it's great that we do Bible study? Okay, okay. Bible study is not nearly as popular as ordination, apparently. Um, but if you're into Bible study and you, you think that studying our faith is, uh, is an important thing to do, and trust me, it is, uh, all may, none must, some should. Yeah? If your faith is a bit kind of, mm, at the moment, that, you would come under the category of some should. Because okay? that's how you get it going again. You go back to the scriptures. Um, so... On Wednesday, the 11th this week, our faith 
uh, development team are going to be working across the diocese. They're going to be meeting. You do know about that, don't you? Because I have given you a leaflet for about a million weeks in a row. Okay? You, you all know what I'm talking about, don't you? It's called Peace in the Puzzle. Yeah? Have you seen it? Every week I've been giving it to you. Peace in the Puzzle. Had an email address at the bottom. Yeah? Because you emailed them, didn't you, to tell them that you were coming? Because there's food and fellowship as well as Bible study. Yeah? Okay? Yeah? If you think it's a great idea... This week, 11, uh, 11th, uh, if you had forgotten, book it in, uh, just like Emily said, book it in, make it happen, get out there. That's fantastic. Um, what else is there coming up uh, in the week? Um, oh, yeah, who thinks that it's great that we have brigades? Ah, oh, awesome. Let's give our brigaders a clap for yesterday. My goodness me. The muscles ache, the, the tiredness, uh, and of course, the really great news about it is we've now got the resources to run our brigades this year. So, fantastically, they'll be meeting on Thursday night at 6.30 for the Church Girls Brigade. Sorry? Oh, 6.45, sorry. And 6.30 on Friday night for the Boys Brigade. And it's great news because it means you can all go and help lead. Now, you see, the thing is, you all think I'm joking, but actually, we don't have enough leaders. So, in the same way it doesn't happen by magic, it's about faithful, willing service. You don't have to be the greatest, as Emily said, you can be the weakest. You can be rubbish at something, and it's still better that you're there, right? It's still better that you're there being rubbish than not being at home thinking, oh, I don't know what to do, okay? Just turn up. Go and, go and help. Be one of those people. Be a person who turns up even if you can't do it, not the person who doesn't turn up in case you can't do it. Be, be, be that person, okay? Right, um, but also at the end of this service, the, there is, I don't know if there's coffee or not, but the hall's out. There is. Right, there's coffee. Great. Go down to the hall, downstairs and the hall. You'll find the place full because there aren't enough leaders. So there weren't enough people yesterday to clear it up. So the hall is full Please take boxes of white elephant and uh, bags of white elephants and, um, and books, thank you very much, uh, to your favorite charity except pals because they've already taken what they want. But please spread the good news around, okay? Take a bag of stuff, take two, take a car load. Um, or even better, stay and help clear it up, put it all away. Even better than that, buy all of Sheila's plants, uh, and that will save her having to take them home and grow them again. So, really great news. Awesome. I think TT is trying to tell me something. TT, you're trying to tell me something. Do you want to come tell me? Come here. Come tell me what it is. No, she doesn't want to tell me now. She's changed her mind. Okay. That happens. That happens. Sometimes the spirit moves and we forget what he said. Right. Birthdays this week include, oh, Mary Domingo, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, suddenly remember, that's tomorrow, yes. Um, Girls Brigade member Ndera, who I think I saw yesterday, yeah. Uh, my mum, Wendy, uh, Wendy, mum, happy birthday, but I'll, I'll send you a card. Um, Gina Brown, remember Gina when she was on placement with us, it's her birthday, and of course, dear Annette, it's your birthday, isn't it? And you were born on Mother's Day. Absolutely fantastic. Really fabulous. Well, it's lovely. Happy birthday to you. Let's sing happy birthday to all those glorious and wonderful people. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God. Happy birthday to you. Okay, so I don't want to hear anybody saying the church doesn't do anything. The church does lots. It's whether we're willing to get involved. So if you have been challenged today or the Lord has spoken in you, felt the spirit moving this morning, I invite you to come and share that with me and we will think about uh, you may know very clearly what your vocation is, or you may not. Um, but come and talk, come and share it with me. Come and tell me what the Spirit has been doing in you today. 
uh, and we'll see where we can go with that. But for now, I'm going to invite you to stand up. We're going to make an act of commitment together because whether you are one year old, 10 year old, or 100 years old, or anywhere in between, the Lord is calling you. My father-in-law always says this, you know when the Lord has no more use for you because you have stopped breathing. Until that time, keep following him. So let's make our act of commitment together. Christ, you call us. Christ, you call us to be your people in the world. We will follow your call to be, our, to be your people. Our hands will do your work. Our feet will walk your way. Christ, you call us. Christ, you call each one of us to be your children for the world. May our hearts search for your truth. May our souls listen to your voice. May our lives follow in your path. Christ, you call each one of us. Christ, you call us to be your people in the world. So may the boldness of the Spirit and the gentleness of the Spirit lead you and transform you. May the gifts of the Spirit equip you, because we all need them. And may the Spirit equip you to serve the Lord in the world, to worship Him at all times. And may you know the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit surrounding you and sustaining you now and forever. Amen. Uh, our final hymn today is number... It's right at the end, number 571, and you literally can do this today if you want to go and help uh, down in the hall. Go, you go out with joy. You shall go out with joy. Joe dances down the aisle. Let's send each other out into the world. You ready? Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia.